somewhat taller than you are, but I used to be. <laughs> well, you're still taller than some. I'm so bent over. I get it. Greetings. Greetings. <laughs> Welcome to Recon UCC. I'm not doing announcements today. Um, we're so glad you joined us online and in person. My name is Angie. My pronouns are she, her. A quick reminder on safe seating. Um, so we stream our service online. It's the safe seating that is off camera is on the outside. If you are in the middle, you will be on camera. And hello to our online folks. 
Please sign in if you're joining us online. And if you're here today, sign in at our um, friendship registers. Those are located at the end of each pew. So uh, sign your name, pass it down your row, and after everyone in your row has signed, please tear off that sheet, put it on top of the binder. That makes it a little easier for our volunteers to collect that sheet. And as we're all signing in, uh, we'd like to welcome any first time visitors. So is there anyone new today or returning after some time? You can raise your hand. Oh, there we go. Okay, and we'll get a microphone to you. <laughs> if you want to say hi to us. <laughs> okay, welcome. <to> <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> That's okay, I'm shy too. <laughs> um, okay, anyone else that maybe is returning from a long time? Okay, okay. Um, and then a couple of announcements. So if you can read this, you can check out books. I don't know if you can read this, <laughs> but we do have like a little library of banned books in the back um, of the church, and we do welcome you to check those out, take them home and read them. We want you to stay informed about what other people don't want you to read. So <laughs> please do uh, check out those books. <laughs> okay. And then another announcement from Creation Care. Uh, they're giving out one orange hefty bag per household for you to participate in the City of Tucson Hard Recycle Plastics Program. There's Lisa <laughs> right there. So it's um, first come, first serve until they run out of bags. <laughs> um, and just a reminder, that started July 1st. So if you want to participate um, in the Hard Recycle Program, you put it in the orange bag and you, you take it to the ward. It, w there was some confusion, it might have been extended. No, use the orange bags. So, and you'd put straws and plastic forks, plastic film, it's a really nice thing. Uh, today is a communion Sunday. You're all welcome to participate with us. Make sure you've grabbed a little communion cup and that cup is hard to recycle plastic. So at the end of the service, there's a green like wastebasket. You can put it in that and the creation care team will recycle it for you. Okay, check your bulletin. You'll see lots more volunteer opportunities and people to pray for. But we'll just end here with a land acknowledgement. We gratefully acknowledge the native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we gather, as well the diverse and vibrant native communities who make their home here today. We encourage you to learn the history of the Tohono O'odham Nation, also known as the people of the desert, who for more than 10,000 years have lived in this region of the Sonoran Desert. We acknowledge their displacement, and we continually seek to discover ways to be in community with their descendants. And with that, that's the end of the announcements. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, so since we don't have any younger children, I'm going to ask a few of you who feel young at heart to just join me up here on this front pew. <laughs> just because they're not here doesn't mean we're not going to do what we need to do. Yay! Okay, they're too old to be young. Come on up here. Y'all can actually grab a little chair because you can fit in it. Okay. I practice this, so I gotta have somebody do it. <laughs> Today we're gonna talk about love. So what is love? Caring. Caring. For yourself and others, you read my sermon. Sharing. Sharing. Dedication. Those are all great answers. Who do you love and what do you love? Like you might love your pets too, so I wanna add a what. <laughs> Who or what do you love? Okay. Everybody. Everything, family and friends, your wife. Okay, okay, okay. Did you ever have the experience where you loved someone, but you didn't really like them all that much in that moment? Anybody else? Okay. Sometimes we get mad at the people we love. 
And sometimes we act unpleasantly when we're mad at the people we love. So I have a suggestion for you today. You can take it or not. It was suggested to me, so I'm going to offer it to you. Try saying to them, I love you, but I'm mad at you right now. See, the important part is that you get to remind them that even though you're acting surly, you still love them. Have you ever had someone act mad at you and hurt your feelings? So if you start with the I love you, it makes it a little bit softer for them and leaves the path open to come back. Now we're going to pray. God, thank you for the gift of love and for those we love and those who love us. Help us to remember that love, even when things are hard, is still true and beautiful. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. What are we supposed to say? God loves you and so do I. And so do we. This is good practice for you for next time. Thank you so much. Please stand in body or in spirit and join in our call to worship and sung response. You are the bold. Welcome to this place, a holy place, because each of us has brought our peace of God to join together in worship. We offer our hearts to you, God. We open ourselves to you and to each other today. Our differences are beautiful and sacred. Our voices are blend in harmony and diversity. Many journeys to this sacred place. Many lights join to brighten a world of shadows. Our paths to this place matter, and each of our stories hold value. Together, we weave a tapestry of divine creativity and holy love, blending all that we are with all that has been and ever will be to the glory of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Today's, today's contemporary voice is from Swami Vivekananda from 1863 to 1902. Nothing else is necessary but these, love, sincerity, and patience.
Today's scripture readings are first from the Hebrew text, Jeremiah 23, 1-3. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you will not attend to them, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will be shepherded, who will shepherd them, and they shall no longer fear or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. Our second reading is from the the uh, New Testament, Mark 6, 1 to 13. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not here sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he would do no deed of power there except that he laid hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons anointed and anointed with oil, many who were sick and cured them. Thus ends the reading of the gospel. That was so brief, I was awaiting more. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. Hi. How y'all doing? Good. Okay. I didn't write that down. That was just extemporaneous. Um, because I'm scrolling and I can't see. <laughs> Color coordination at its finest. <laughs> May the peace of Christ be with you. 
Please pray with me. God, guide my heart and my words. Allow me to bring words of love and hope to your beloveds. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, we pray. Amen. So we're going to talk about love today. And not just the easy hallmark kinds of love, but hard love, challenging love. These are annoying. Sacrificial love, love that requires a boundary, and self-love. The words of the prophet Jeremiah have always felt to me to be a bit of a cautionary tale, both because I'm called to shepherd service and because I've been part of a remnant or two. Some of you have also had the experience of being driven out of churches, of homes, of institutions. Anybody had that experience? Being run out of Dodge? Okay. It's painful and it can make you never want to try that kind of thing again. And I'll tell you why, it's traumatic. I talk to people every week that have no intention of ever, ever, ever being a part of a worship community again. They've been harmed and traumatized. It isn't a safe haven for them. It feels more like returning to the scene of a crime because it is. Some of you might resonate with those feelings and yet you gave this worship community a chance, and for that I thank you. I do not take that for granted. Church, it's not enough for us to say, but we're different. Yeah. It's not enough to have the rainbow doors or an O and A status. And for those of you that are not UCC literate, O and A means open and affirming. That's the LGBTQI plus 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 IA plus 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 commitment from the UCC churches to be that open and affirming space. What is required is that we act our love out loud. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone to churches that claim a whosoever welcome. But apparently, I did not fall under the big umbrella of whosoever, unless I kept it very quiet and played along like everybody else. I say that to say, a lot of churches will speak a good thing and not do it. Not just around orientation or gender, but about welcome. Amen. I am pleased to say that this church does a great job. <sighs> look around. Just take a moment and look around at the people in the worship with you. Don't hurt yourself. You have a bad neck. Look gently. <laughs> I tried that once, I almost needed a chiropractor. <laughs> These are the loving folks that make this church community what it is. Online folks, I'm looking at you too. You too are a part of what makes this church as wonderful as it is. There's always room for growth, but I have to admit, I may be biased, but that doesn't mean I'm wrong. We are pretty awesome. Every time I think about this uh, leaving someplace, leaving and becoming a part of the remnant, you know I can't help myself, I'm so goofy. There's a song um, that comes to mind for me, and I hope this uh, doesn't give you too much of an earworm. Just slip out the back, Jack. Make a new plan, Stan. You don't need to be coy, Roy. Just get yourself free. Hop on the bus, Gus. Y'all know it. Yep. Don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the key, Lee, and get yourself free. I say that not just to you, but to all who might watch this service at some point and realize that they are tithing into a church that does not love them. They're committing their acts of service. They're playing the piano. They're preaching from the pulpit in a church which doesn't allow them to be in the fullness of who they are. So next time you start wondering what you need to do and you feel upset, just go ahead and sing that song in your head. I'm appropriating it. Is that Paul Simon? Yep. OK, good. Yep. Okay. I thought so, but I wasn't sure. So this narrative about merging the ordinary 
This is Mark's narrative about merging the ordinary, familiar, with the extraordinary and called, anointed and purposed by a divine source is also a testament of love. I often mention to you that you have a calling, or more than one. It was placed on your spirit before you took your first breath. This calling has been given all the seasoning that life has given you thus far. Seasoning. So all those moments when you uh, were tearing your hair out, those of you that have hair, those sleepless nights, the things that you've gotten through have been the seasoning to make your calling even greater. I'm not saying that God punishes us for God's amusement. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that everything in your life can have benefit eventually. You may not have it right away. Give yourselves time to heal. I invite you to step out and step into your own footprint. Even after Jesus said to his disciples that they would not be honored in their most familiar places, he sent them two by two to do great things. He gave them humility instructions and boundary instructions. They didn't need a full clergy closet of finery. They didn't need robes and big pointy hats and lots of things. They uh, didn't need a cathedral or a fancy church. No food, no expense account, no resource, no sustenance. And unlike Reverend Joel Steen, they did not need a private plane. <laughs> and others, he's not the only one. If any place does not welcome you, every part of you, every part of you, the believer, the unbeliever, all that you are, don't stay there. Beat feet out of there. You don't have to put them on blast on your Facebook or your Instagram. Facebook is still a thing for some of us old people. So young people, don't, don't tease it. We got a thing. That's it. You know, leave us alone. I still don't understand how Instagram is supposed to work, even though I have an account. So I'll get a tutorial from my 12-year-old. You don't have to call or email everyone you know to talk about it. You don't need to meet people with their cars in the parking lot and talk about it. Can I just say, church people are really good at that. They'll have a beef, and they will not tell the person with whom they have the beef. But they will tell the person who parked next to them. And that person will tell the next person, and it'll come up in knitting group and at the book club and everywhere else except the person that they really should be talking to. Rant over. I want to invite you, if and when, because you will eventually at some point have beef with me, I invite you to come and tell me about it. If you're scared to come by yourself because you have church trauma, bring a friend. You help me grow. Because this isn't Lewis's church. This is our church. If there's something I need to tweak to make it more comfortable or resonant for you, let me know. We'll talk about it. I may not do it. But we'll talk about it, and I'll give you a reason why. And we'll see if we can reason together about it. <sighs> Whatever it is that you hold in your life, don't let the disdain of others stop you from walking into your journey. So these passages are about love. My take on the Hebrew scripture is a warning to us. Don't fall in love with the shepherd. We too are human and fallible. I'm going to tell you a secret. Many of my colleagues uh, fall into danger because they experience adoration from those they serve and they accept the offered pedestals. It doesn't start off usually with them, I'm better than you. It starts off with people loving them and adoring them and going, oh my God, you're so close to God. And them not saying, so are you. I get nosebleeds and I'm scared of heights. So I am doing no pedestals. Don't even try it. It's a slippery slope and honestly, it's narcotic. I don't think anyone is immune from it. So it's important to be vigilant. I can't think of a single religious cult leader that didn't eventually identify themselves as God or singularly chosen by God before they went off that deep end and had their, the people they were called to shepherd follow them. I am not saying you shouldn't love us. 
care about us or pray for us, I know that I need that. And I appreciate your prayers and your care and your love. I'm saying that we should love each other, even or especially when we disagree, are disappointed, or just plain mad about something. That seems fair. I'm saying I don't deserve any special, any extra, because of what I got called to do. Every gift is from the heart of God, nurtured and seasoned by life, and I'm a recipient just like you. I am not the giver just like you. I'm going to leave you with these six types of love, and you may think of others to add to the list. You don't have to write this down. This isn't, uh, there'll be no homework today. Yay, no homework, Pastor. Yeah. Easy love. Easy love is that, that kind of hallmark kind of love. You know, sweet and tender, just like a warm blanket in the winter someplace other than Tucson. Hard love is that love that stands right up close to your dislike. Sometimes it's obligatory. It's the love that reminds you of your own humanity and errors and lets you love them because they too are created by God. That does not require that you like them. Just so as you know. Challenging love. Challenging love is the love that holds you when you're watching that loved one hurt themselves and you can't prevent it. Boundary love is the love that tells you that saying no is the most loving thing you can do in the situation. Anybody experienced boundary love before? When you've had to say no to someone that you love because it's good for them. It's not good to you because you just want to lavish them, but it pays to know terms like codependent and to be treated for such. These last two are very hard. They can keep you up at night praying and crying, hoping that your beloveds make it through to the other side because, at least in terms of addiction, there is no guarantee that they will. It is really one day at a time. Last two, am I lying? Yes, last two. Sacrificial love. The love that means you give up something important to you because it will help someone else. It might be a kidney. It might be time or some other resource. When you know they have need, whether or not they say it out loud, and you address that need with intention. And last but not least, last but not least, last but not least, self-love. This is the love that's often the hardest for us to have because we've been taught that it equals arrogance or pride or some other negative thing. That self-love means you're selfish and you don't care enough about others. Self-love is important. I would say critical. Believing that you are beautiful, wonderful, and created with intention and purpose by a loving God. Believing that you are worthy to give and worthy to receive. Believing that the measure of you is not based on your productivity, your job, your money, your degrees, your titles, or anything outside of you. Remembering that God loves you so much that God planted a gift and a calling in you just for you. Praise God. If you came in today, in person or virtually, feeling less than, feeling like you're just wrong, unlovable, undeserving of care or thoughtfulness, because people and institutions and society have told you over and over in many ways that this world was not built for you and it will not be built for you. And for the things that we've tried to make easier for you, we're on the precipice of taking them away. This is a word for you to remind you that you're worthy. You're worthy. Put your hand on your own heart and just say, I'm worthy. I'm worthy. God made you with intention and purpose. Look around you and breathe the love in. I know I'm having you look around a lot. Call it aerobics. Look around, breathe in the love. Even you too over there. Yeah, there you go. Look, you guys are looking down. I'm watching you. Here at home, wherever you are, just take a moment to bask in the godness and goodness of this moment. 
All the things you're worried about will be, but just for this moment. Breathe in the love, you deserve it, and God keeps giving it over and over and over again. Amen. If you are at home and watching us virtually, I want to invite you to grab a morsel and some drink to join us in communion. And we're going to have a different journey that's in your order of worship right now. We're going to have some prayer. Just stay where you are. I don't need you to do anything special this time. You don't have to come up and all the things. But I want to take this opportunity to pray together, corporate prayer, for those that have asked for our prayer. Can we do that? Okay. Please incline your hearts and spirits in prayer with me. Gracious God, we come before you because you've invited us. We come with thanksgiving. We come with gratitude. And we come with burdens, with questions. We come realizing that we don't know everything. We're not even close. And so we ask you to guide us. Guide our hearts, our feet, our mouths. And we come asking together for grace, mercy, healing, resource, whatever is needed for those that have asked our prayers for them. Lowen Arrington, Jean Buell, Kathy Clow, Rachel Cox, George Easley, Cindy Frame, Vincent Granillo, Sean Henson, Christine Lamoureux, Donna McHugh, Barbara Myers, Terry Rydzelski, Sean Riley, Shirley Schoenberger, Brian Sayer, Louise Small, Arnie Stover, Snover, Kathy Snover, Unique and Chanta Walden and their family, Roger Worm, Aston Bloom's stepdaughter, Tricia, Aston Bloom's friend's son, George, Amy Darapino's cousin, Melinda, Sharon Hildebrand's daughter, Jennifer, Chris Jones' father, Doug, Lisa Kadoff's sister-in-law, Helen, Karen Malek's mother, I, I can't see that, Ida May, Carolyn Murphy's friend Joanne and Carolyn Murphy, Carol Peterson's mother Doris, Carol Peterson's friend Sean, Shirley's cousins Bill and Linda, Evelyn Spitzer's cousin Davina, Evelyn's friend Sam and his family, Alex and Alex's brother, I'm not going to try to say his name because I'll mangle it, say it, say it again. Yevgeny, I thought that. Kidding. Okay. We pray for him and his family and his mother, Dina, Dinah. Don Cole's cousin, Heather, and her daughter, Alex. Ina Merson's niece, Andrea. We pray for Oak Flat. We pray for Matt's mom, Susan. My friends, Alma and Jan. My cousin, Anna. If you have prayers on your heart that were not mentioned, you can lift them up verbally or inside. Take this time to lift your voices and offer your prayer to God. My mother and my child, our country, our planet. I pray for the body of Christ. Those with whom I do not agree. God, we come to you praying and believing that there is power in prayer. There is power in the wisdom and energy of the universe, which many of us call God. We come knowing that your blessings and grace are not given to us because we earn them, but because you love us. And we thank you for that love. Amen. It's time to sing.
that are new or new-ish with us, I want to remind you that we offer an open table. That means if you have a desire to join us in communion, you are welcome to. This isn't our table. This is the table of Jesus, open to all. On what would be their last meal together, Jesus gathered his disciples and his friends. He took bread and he broke it. He gave thanks to God for it and he shared it among them, saying to them, this is my body, which will be broken for you. He also took the wine, and they had wine. We have grape juice. You'll be okay. And he poured it out, and he gave thanks to them. He shared it among them. And he said, this is the covenant, the new covenant of my blood. We do this in remembrance, and we do this in faith. Jesus offered them a new covenant, one that was centered in love service, and community. And we are all, all, whosoever, every single one of us, we are all invited and offered this same covenant today. As Jesus invited them to eat and drink, I invite you to eat and drink with intention as people invited to be part of one sacred body and as individuals created in the heart of God. Thank you so much. I invite you now to join in our communion prayer, which we speak together. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your chosen and beloved one. Jesus, we take you into ourselves, symbolically but earnestly. We strive to be one flesh with you, one heart with you. We strive to be your hands here in this time and place where you have planted us to serve. Amen. I'd like to extend this invitation to generosity by quoting Psalms 112-5, which says, good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with peace. Creator God, help us to be as generous as we are able as our offering is taken today.
Loving Creator, thank you for the privilege of partnering with you and each other in the work of our church ministry. We know that you will bless our efforts and contributions for the proclamation of the gospel and the building up of your church. We pray that you will be pleased with our tithes and offerings today. Affirm your grace, love, and provision for each giver in our midst. Thank you for their heart. Let them continue to give with cheerfulness and full trust that you will never fail them in their time of need. Amen. Please stand in body and spirit. Join us in our song of sending this little light of mine. back here deciding whether you should sit or stand. You can sit down. <laughs> Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. You will love God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all of your soul and with all of your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it. You should love your neighbor as you love yourself. And this new commandment I give to you, love one another as I have loved you. By this, the world will know that you are my disciples. Go in peace, go with power, lead with love. Amen. Amen. 